Good evening, everybody. Thanks for the request, whoever it was. I can't quite remember. I'm here with Mr. Graham Lineman. Sorry, Lina. <laughs> you, you got autocorrected there. I'm afraid your name isn't in my dictionary. Neither is misandry. We'll put a pin in that. So, you're here because your entire career got autocorrected by raging feminist bigots, didn't it? Yeah, I, I'm still, I'm still astonished that I have paid such a heavy price. It seems like a a very uncontroversial thing to say that, you know, women, men shouldn't be in women's prisons, in their changing rooms, children shouldn't be sterilised and, and mutilated in gender clinics. I don't think children should be genitally mutilated anywhere. Unfortunately, and in my opinion bizarrely, that is somehow a controversial topic and has been for a very long time when it comes to a particular kind of mutilation of a particular kind of genital but we'll put another pin in that poor choice of words perhaps continue yeah there was never from the moment i started speaking about it there was no support from other people in the entertainment industry and i was left isolated and 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 it was much easier to smear my name uh, cast me as a bigot um and yeah here i am <laughs> don't worry graham there are people out here who care about your rights as a <laughs> whatever you are remind us again why you're here it was just a growing awareness that women were being uh bullied online for having perfectly normal opinion about their rights and about uh the rights of um uh trans people but uh I no longer use that term trans people because I soon discovered that trans did not actually refer to transsexuals. Um, There's no such thing as a transsexual. Human beings cannot change their sex. I'm not going to mince my words anymore. I'm sick of it. I'm surprised you're not. Um, but of course, you know, the, the, the more I ex examined the issue, the more I realized they were talking about uh, transvestites. A transvestite is someone who changes their appearance. That is a thing. And it is the only thing they possibly can be talking about. And, um, you know, I think, I think you could perhaps make an argument that a, a fully transitioned uh, uh, man, uh, you know, who, who presents as a woman. Um... What do you mean fully transitioned? There's no limit to the amount of makeup you can wear. There's no limit to the amount of surgeries you can get, but none of it can fully or even partially exact the proposed change. I, I think you could make the argument, I don't agree with the argument, but you could make the argument that, that such a person could be allowed into a women's space. I can see that argument being made. Um, I, I, I've got a hard line on it now because of... Uh... No, you haven't. That is not a remotely hard line. It is a melted marshmallow trap dick of a line, my friend. Why? Because uh, I just I just think that if you give an inch on the issue of women's uh, spaces, uh, men have proved that they will take a mile. Um, Maybe men wouldn't be so determined to drastically denounce their masculinity if women would let them have their own spaces. First they came for the gentlemen's clubs, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a gentleman. Then they came for the Boy Scouts, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a Boy Scout. Then they came for the infantry, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't an infant. This is some kind of dark and highly inappropriate joke about infanticide could go here, but I can't think of it right now. And they've always come for our toilets. Whenever their own is backed up with a queue of thoughts fawning over themselves in the mirror. But it seems like something of a first world problem when we can't even get a job because we don't fulfill the diversity criteria. But, you know, the, the idea that mere cross-dressers uh, should be allowed into women's spaces, I just found, uh, I, was, I was outraged. The delayed, the delayed reaction of your outrage is why it got so bad. You didn't just give them an inch. By the time you fell for the lies of the feminist movement, you had already given them all three of your inches. Sorry, that was, that was, I didn't, that was, that was the funny thing to say. For all I know, you're, you're hung like a horse.
and you should stay away from male feminists. As time went on, it it just kept getting worse. And, you know, you would see men in women's prisons, um, uh, men in women's sports. Um, none of them had tra transitioned, mm -hmm. all fully intact. Mm -hmm. See, there's that inch again. You've drawn the line where it doesn't make a difference. Cutting your dick off doesn't make you any less strong in the upper body or any less aggressive, quite on the contrary. Uh, yeah, and, and the definition of um, trans uh, in the, or transgender in the, I think it's in, in the Equality Act, is someone who has transitioned or is thinking of transitioning. And the problem with that is that anyone can say they're thinking of transition, you know? Yeah, it's the thought that counts. When the thought is, I hate masculinity. Hold that thought. And, the, and you know, one of my early contacts in all this was a group of transsexuals who were mortified by this um, uh, change and thought that it would actually undermine the rights that they had arrived at. You mean their rights as women? Can't imagine what else you might mean. These, you know, the backlash against this is starting. Well, I, was, I say starting, but I, I think it's probably in full flight now. Um, and because of the teeming of these often heterosexual men mm -hmm. uh, with gay people, mm -hmm. um, the support for gay rights is actually going down. You seem to be implying that heterosexual men are the problem. When was the last time any support for their rights has gone anything but down? How's your divorce going? Everything okay? Yeah, and it's because um, mainstream gay and legacy gay organizations have absolutely failed to call out the huge amount of men in this uh, in this movement who are, excuse my language, taking the piss. Uh, what movement would that be? Intersectional feminism? So um, it's been a disaster and also another, there's a second uh, way in which it's destroying uh, the gay community and that's the um, sterilization and mutilation of, of, of a whole generation of gay youth. If gay people can be coerced into becoming trans in the second place, is it conceivable that straight people can be coerced into being those aforementioned gay people in the first place? Can straight people just get fast-tracked directly into the trans camp? No, because that would mean straight men could be just as victimised as anyone else, and that appears to be impossible in your worldview, your worldview being intersectional feminism. See what I'm getting at? If you continue to sow this culture, you will continue to fall afoul of this reap culture. Look, many gay people go through puberty, and for everyone, puberty is a, um, it, it can be a traumatic mm. uh, experience. But they're being told that the trauma arises from the fact that they've, from the idea that they've been born in the wrong body. Mm. And that's a, that's a incredibly homophobic thing to suggest. Mm. And it's led to the most I think the biggest crisis in gay um, health since AIDS. I could have sworn straight people can get AIDS too. There's certainly some disproportionality going on, but what you've just said there, depending on who's interpreting it, could be considered homophobic or heterophonic. Sorry, <laughs> heterophobic, autocorrect again. Apparently that's not in my dictionary either and evidently not in yours. Telling someone they're in the wrong body is not just homophobic, it is misanthropic in every conceivable way. I think it might be the most hateful thing, fundamentally hateful thing you could say to anyone. Because nobody can change what body they are, so to speak, in. You can lop off some bits bits of it and stick other things onto it. You can ship of Theseus the whole thing, but the simultaneity of mind and body remains in continuity. If a body is wrong all the way down to its genetics, it will always be wrong. 
and that is a hideous thing to have anyone believe. To call it merely homophobic is to grossly downplay how evil it is. But that's how it works in this intersectional worldview of yours. It's worse than a zero-sum game, it's a negative-sum game. Hating half the population is somehow worse than hating all of it. Hating 5% is worse than hating all of it. Hating, what is it, 0.01% is worse than hating all of it. If and only if the ones you hate are the protected people. And I would put it to you that in this context, protected is just a euphemism for superior. And to draw such a distinction between demographics is itself really quite hateful. Yes, I know you don't define it as hate, but I put it to you that your definition, therefore, is itself really quite hateful. And from there it is indeed an infinite regress of turtles all the way down. Just stop it. Get some help. One of the... I, I know many lesbians who are in despair. Yeah, domestic violence will do that. Ain't I a stinker? A community that's already very small mm. and is kind of vanishing because... Um, there's no spaces for them anymore. I have a friend, Jenny Watson, who, who uh, tried to do a speed dating night for um, lesbian, for her fellow lesbians, and it was disrupted by protesters. Yeah, people who don't like men have this extraordinary tendency to eat each other as they jockey for position at the top of the progressive stack. You're doing it now. So we have a situation now, it's 2023, and lesbians can't meet up without being abused by men. Graham! Men who like being men will leave you the hell alone. They will leave lesbians alone. People who hate men cannot leave anything well alone. They are possessed with hatred that they have pathologically mistaken for love. I know you don't understand. You have the same problem. <laughs> I know. It's, it's yeah. really frustrating. Yeah, but... Uh... After a while, you just go, you know, numb. If people aren't going to look at someone like uh, Melissa Poulton, I think. Who's that? Uh, who, is, who is just a parody of a trans person. Mm. Like, literally just uh, wearing a wig like it fell on him from a tree. They're all parodies, Graham. They are all, literally, not what they say they are. And if people see that and don't realise that something, something is wrong, mm. then I really don't know what it will take. All it takes is that inch you're still giving. You need to roll it back, all the way back. We need to call things what they are, not just what you want to call them. You need to cease this insistence that you can imagine things into reality. And that includes this insane conspiracy conjecture that says men and women are defined by a dynamic of oppression. That's where it all started. It's not true. It's never been true. And if you keep starting there, this will keep happening. But I do know, and, and this gives me a lot of hope, I do see a lot of gay people are, are now, um, you know, properly, we call it peaked. Does that mean red-pilled in blue pill speak? Which means you kind of, um, you, you realize how dangerous, how ridiculous the, the gender ideology is. And a lot of gay, gay men are, are, seem to be peaking. A lot of people have gone clear over the peak and to the other side of the mountain. Join us. Recognise that you've been lied to. Not just for the last few years, but for your whole life. Uh, I, I, again, uh, it's like you say, you think we're getting further, but I, I still find it extraordinary that the BBC is prepared to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you poor sweet summer child, you. It's all they do. Always. That's not a recent development either. Do you know, everything you thought you knew about current affairs before the 21st century was probably false. Because you got all your information from the TV or the press, from government-regulated propaganda outlets like the BBC. They will never tell us the truth. Certainly not the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Because the truth is never as advantageous to them as whatever lie or half-truth they can spin in its place. I'm delighted for you that you're beginning to lift the veil. Keep going. Lift it all the way off. 
tear it from your face and burn it and dance around the smouldering embers as you sing hide the diddly eyed lum diddly doodly eyed lum it is high time the end is nigh it is high nigh brian kai and it's because they everyone's scared everyone's scared of of their fellow um their fellow man their colleagues that'll do because everyone is now a Stasi agent. Everyone is now uh, able to report on anyone else um, for any kind of thought they have that might get them into trouble. You know? Not everyone is the Stasi. It's mostly feminists and other branches of the better than you community. The only, the only little signs I had was, I, remembered, I remember thinking Julie Bindle was a horrible person. She has horrible ideas, yes. She has a relentless and irrational hatred of men. Julie uh, saw it coming 15 years before everybody mm. else. Yeah, no, loads of people saw it coming. We've been trying to warn you for donkey's years. We just weren't allowed. We were censored. While hateful lunatics like Julie Bindle were freely platformed by the likes of the BBC. Put two and two together, Graham. It does not make five. And all these organizations are the same. They, they do nasty, evil stuff. And as soon as they're caught, they pretend they're not doing it. Yeah, they, they tell their supporters that men are uniquely evil and need to be uniquely treated as such. And they tell their detractors that they just believe in equality. The Mott and Bailey are both right there in the public eye, but they still try and gaslight us anyway, because they can. If they keep getting away with it, why wouldn't they? We've had a few generations now that have grown up in uh, relative comfort and prosperity. It was a bit of a golden age and people, you know, teenagers and young people are always the same. They want a cause. Mm. And trans came along and it was, a, it was just a cause they could adopt. Young people are not all the same. They certainly haven't always been the same. It's only relatively recently that they've been brainwashed by the feminist bigots who've overthrown our education system. And a great deal of young people are still resisting it. You just don't hear about them because they're being censored by the feminist bigots who've overthrown the media. Um, and it's been... This, this, this kind of idea of what trans means has been supported and encouraged by, as you say, like establishment gay organisations. Feminists, Graham, not establishment gay organisations. Those two have been overthrown by feminist bigots. So, um, yeah, I think, and, and also there's other things going on. Like I think, for instance, uh, the Tavistock uh, whistleblowers said that parents would bring their children in because they were clearly homophobic mm. and they wanted to uh, fix the, the children. You keep using that word. Perhaps it does mean what you think it means, but you are never, nevertheless barking up the wrong tree. And that's like, you know, one of the mistakes that people made, again, because of these years of prosperity and comfort we've had, is thinking that homophobia disappeared. You don't appear to be able to see the wood for the one tree up which you are barking. It just, it just gets driven underground and it turns into something else. Can you think of something else? We put a couple of pins in it earlier, do you remember? Well, I saw a BBC show once that was, uh, I think in Calcutta, and it said it's got a thriving trans scene. Yes. It's because homosexuality was illegal. Why do we have such a thriving trans scene? Is there anything that's increasingly illegal over here? I'll cut to the chase, Graham. It's men. It's men talking to women in the street. It's men interacting with women anywhere. It's men when they're nice to women. It's men when they're not nice to women. Everything men do is becoming increasingly illegal. It's practically illegal to be a male at this point. And that's why so many of them are denouncing their masculinity. All this has happened because of feminists and their unfettered and unquestioned hatred of men and their rights. I, w one thing is that it's, it is a male, it's a men's rights campaign. What? 
above everything else. It's men driving this more than any other group. You know, uh, I think women, a lot of women are actually the victims of it. Um, uh, oh, sorry, my mind's just gone blank. Mine too. Um, you know, if you notice to be a trans woman, you don't have to have an operation. You just have to wear a wig like, like the Lib Dem, uh, like the, uh, is, was it Lib Dems, Melissa? Is it? Women don't even have to wear a wig, Graham. They don't have to do anything to enjoy the rights of a first-class citizen. They already are. So men are vicious. Men, men are, are aggressive. They communicate in an aggressive way, um, especially when they don't have any basis for any of these uh, beliefs. You know, there's no scientific basis. There's no... Uh, ethical basis there's no logical basis there's no basis to it so when you don't have a basis for an argument you resort to threats uh, threats to livelihood physical threats um, you know it's all they have because they don't have any arguments Are you serious bro <laughs> yes and you're expecting sympathy are you because some feminists said all that stuff you just said, but about you. Mm, yeah, well, you know, I, I was a part of the problem at one point. I was a node in the kind of disinformation network. <laughs> you know, we all thought it was pretty big of you when you officially apologised to Count Dankula. Uh, and it was accepted. Wasn't it? No one was expecting an apology. Nobody asked for one. It's feminists who constantly demand apologies and then never accept them. And yet here you are, spouting the same feminist apologia that has haunted you for your whole life. And they'll never accept it. They'll never accept you. You're still blaming men for everything, just like they do, and they still hate you. What is wrong with you, my dude? I can see now that that apology of yours meant nothing. You didn't mean a word of it, not really. You haven't learned a damn thing, have you? Why should anyone give you the time of day? Because um, I now simply, I, if people can lie and say that Eddie Izzard is a woman or, or someone like that, then they, who knows what's true? The truth is often difficult to excavate, yes, but it's impossible to even stumble upon when you are as blinded by hatred as you are. And it's not even self-hatred. You don't hate yourself. On the contrary, you think you are better than all the other men. That's why you will blame them for the excesses of a movement that proudly hates them, that is in the process of attempting to erase their identities and to erase as much of their bodies as they're willing to sacrifice. You have a red-hot nerve to speak of other people's lies when you've just claimed that the intersectional feminist body horror cult of the trans lobby is a men's rights campaign. In reality, it is the culmination of over a century of abject hatred against men and the systematic removal of their rights. Good God, y'all! The, the, all the left-wing causes that I supported, I now w wonder whether I got the full story. You didn't. Um, how much of it was simply uh, repeated wisdom. You're still repeating it. Uh, so, yeah, I feel, like, um, I feel like I've kind of woken up a little bit from a trance. You haven't. Another thing that I, I completely went along with was the demonization of conservatives. You know, the idea that they were uh, evil, you know? You're still demonizing men! <laughs> you know, you happen to have caught me at a time in my life when I'm trying to refrain from shaming individuals even for the incredibly stupid things they say. And my word, man, you're not making it easy. Maybe you should call it a day. All right, you're a fat wanker. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just extraordinary. And no one will, no one, from the other side will explain to me what I'm getting wrong. What other side? You're a feminist getting harassed by other feminists. 
You're just slightly different divisions in the same unholy inquisition, arguing over how best to blame and punish men for everything. No wonder you're so confused. The harassment from the trans lobby is what I call um, bespoke harassment. So if, for me, they just uh, take away my ability to make a living, they hide my books, they put up stickers uh, uh, calling for violence to be used against me. But for, for, for J.K. Rowling, she gets all that put. She also gets um, you know, her name taken off schools, uh, Harry Potter events shut mm. down, and it's really like punishing. And mm. she, she doesn't get exactly punished through this, but the child, they're punishing the children through her. Try being a men's rights advocate, Graham. An actual one. Not a mindless drone in a civil war between two factions of feminists who call each other men's rights advocates because it's the most insulting thing they can think of. I mean an actual, literal, men's rights advocate. Or even just someone who has the audacity to put their hand up and say, maybe we could try not blaming men for everything. It's not working. Maybe we could try something else. See how far you get. Walk a mile in those shoes and see what kind of bespoke harassment you get. Spoiler alert, it's the kind where you get throttled into obscurity and no one even cares. Never mind invites you onto their show to plug your boxy book. The public aren't the problem. The public, the public know this is nonsense. The problem are the gate, is the gatekeepers. The public does no squat. For the most part, the public listens to the gatekeepers. They listen to the BBC and they think they're being told the truth. If you can only imagine how bad things really are. And, like... I found out yesterday that in in America this year there were fifty thousand trans surgeries. Uh huh. You know, or orchiectomies, which will completely sterilize. And, yeah. and you, you, these are often young gay men who um, have just their their, li their sexual lives are over. They're very often children, Graham. They're too young to even be gay. Boys too young to consent to anything are being sacrificed on the altar of this ruthless misandric cult and you are calling it a men's rights campaign. As I alluded at the top of the show, the genitals of male children have been sacrificed on the altar of ruthless misandric cults for a very long time and no one has even attempted to do anything about it except, by definition, men's rights advocates. The very people who you use as an insult. You suck, sir. It's an extraordinarily homophobic, misogynistic movement. Holy feckin' arse. Girls. Drink. They are like little symbols of a completely ridiculous worldview, you know? Not just a ridiculous worldview, but a homophobic one. I know now why you use that word. And I'm not sure how ironic it is that you use it in that way. In some languages, the word homo, or variations of it, means man. L'homme. El hombre. See? So in a way, uh, with some poetic license, what's going on in here could indeed be called homophobia. But that's clearly not what you mean, hence the irony. Languages always seem to find a way of, 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 of evading any word that might mean the irrational fear and hatred of male humans, or, or any signifier that might allude to such a concept. We do have a word for it, though. It's misandry. But it's not in your vocabulary. The very idea of it is not in your conceptual lexicon. Most people, i.e. the aforementioned public, knows of no such concept. That's how deep the termites have dined. It's how we cast this blanket normalization of the irrational fear and hatred of male humans. Fish don't know they're in water. And humans don't know they're in misandry. They think they're swimming in patriarchy. Even when they're staring directly at misandry, even when it's right in front of their faces in the form of women who can't stand being in the same room as men, They'll just pretend it's trans people they hate and that women are the victims of it. They'll observe up close a society that gleefully slices up male genitals and gets applause for it 
and and you'll pretend it's gay people they hate, and the women are the victims of it. People will tie knots in their brain and call it anything but what it clearly and plainly is. That is hatred. That is cruel, callous, deeply sinister hatred. And yet people are out here arguing about blacks versus whites, gays versus straights, trans versus cis, immigrants versus whoever, anti-Semitism versus Islamophobia. It's, it's, it's nothing. None of it can hold a candle to the ubiquity, the monopoly, the urgency of misandry. It's a corrosive contagion that's eating away at the foundations of our civilization, nay, our species, and any chance of a future it might have in this world. If we don't address this problem, everything is going to keep getting worse. And I'm not even going to tell you how much or how little hope I have left, because that's not the point. It really doesn't matter with me now, because I've been to the mountaintop and I've seen the promised land. I may not make it there with you, etc. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just leave it there. All right, folks, don't hit like, don't hit subscribe, don't hit the notification bell. None of it does anything. Leave a comment if you like, but there's a good chance YouTube will auto-delete it without notifying you or disclosing why. That's how it works. On this channel, please follow me on Rumble and BitChute and Odyssey, where there is a sporting chance that your voice can be heard in the unlikely event that you choose to support me or men or their rights. It's all uphill from there, I'm afraid. Probably always will be, but hey, it keeps you busy, keeps you on your toes, and it's a great way to stay in shape. All the best. See you next time. Stay alive if you feel like it. Word.